okay so uh, as I mentioned before the solution for or the technical way of uh, handling side effects inside react and also allowing us to, to use the, the fetch uh, command and uh, interact to the server goes through this uh, uh, new hook new function uh, react uh, provides it's called the uh, use effect hmm? um, basically what use effect does is gives you a context in which uh, you may execute some side effect code okay here we have a very uh, very simple example and a bad example so this one is bad uh, where uh, we are creating a, a side effect in this case it's just a console.log so it's nothing nothing really to worry about and but we are doing that in the render code so we are inside the function body uh, in the in the in the sequence of instruction that we are doing uh, we are executing uh, whenever in the in the render function okay uh, basically this is very simple but we we should be aware that we are we don't have the control over when and how many times this function will be called it's called every time reacts want to render uh, red decides whether to render uh, maybe never maybe twice uh, and sooner or later we have no control so basically uh, this console.log may happen at different time a strange time an unpredictable time or whatever okay uh, if we want to do some side effect uh, of course if this console.log is just for debugging it's okay we are not, don't, let's not make a, a big deal out of this okay this is just an example of a side effect uh, which, which just stays in one line of code um, the solution would be to to wrap the code that generates a side effect inside the callback for this new use effect hook so a use effect defines an environment where uh, the callback is called may be called uh, at the proper time and we know that inside the use effect callback we can use uh, um we can use the uh, side effects uh, that we want okay we are not bound to the purely functional style we can do whatever whatever um, sorry, um, global uh, operation or external operation uh, we we need to do and uh, the execution of these uh, hooks uh, doesn't depend uh, on the rendering of, of react okay but it depends uh, on the logic of this hook then basically there's the second argument that we are going to study that uh, helps us to the to decide or to tell react when we want this code to 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 execute so we are in control of when that uh, code will be executed okay um, practically this example we, we can try to implement this example is very you know, it's just two lines or, or whatever in our examples so let's try uh, to create a new uh, file uh, we can call it uh, you know uh, it's called grid in the in the slide so we can call it also grid.js when we can implement uh, this function for for this hello world function okay uh, let's make it zoom in function grid receive some properties okay and uh, um, we can just return uh, the hello world as uh, a message okay so we have uh, a message uh, is uh, maybe hello and then we concatenate props dot uh, name whatever we will know I am not making it identical to the slides uh, I don't care okay just uh, I can okay a bit a bit large and uh, uh, I can return this just the component return maybe an h1 with the message inside okay this just the stupidest component that we make we can make and inside the app we just uh, throw everything away and we just insert our grid component we need to export it export 
default grid. Okay, and from the app.js we grid name is word. Okay, so this should work hopefully if I start it. So I go to into examples npm start. And uh, we are not surprised to see that uh, it works. Let me show you the uh, this window, of course. Okay. Okay. This is nothing. I didn't. I, I didn't do anything yet. Of course. Um, next step would be say, okay, uh, I want to execute uh, um, uh, uh, some code inside an effect so it's easy to uh, to integrate in our component okay for logging the message uh, when we want for example okay so uh, we can add the user effect hook of course we need to uh, to import it from react Import use effect from React. Like we normally import use state, is the same. Okay. And uh, the first parameter, use effect has two parameters. The first one is the callback, where uh, we can execute our code. So in this case, it would be, for example, console.log. Uh, of the message in, even if we are inside uh, a callback we can use the closure to access this message for example uh, for the moment we don't have uh, we, we want to write a, a second parameter we'll see in a moment what uh, what it means okay so right now there's no uh, much difference uh, from uh, the previous version if we reload the application Let's go into, let's open the console. If we reload the application, we see that uh, we have the hello world message here in the console no? that just has been printed. So this shows that the callback has been called. Uh, and uh, I, I'm adding, it will be called every time uh, the component uh, will uh, re-render. Okay, so. Right now, uh, it's not a big uh, deal, it's not a big change. We just isolated some side effects code inside a user effect hook, okay? That will um, execute it outside the rendering cycle. Uh, to show it, for example, we can, if I add another console.log here, here, Okay, and here, here I run the application. I see that here is printed before hello world. It's because here is printed during the uh, render code. And after the render code, after this uh, uh, JSX is being mapped into the DOM of this page, then only then the hook will be executed when all the rendering is completed and so when um, we are sure that we have a final DOM and uh, so all the functional part has already done its own propagation of events and so on okay okay uh, for logging that would be quite uh, useless but in general Okay, this mechanism is able uh, allows us to set some callbacks. So the first argument is what to execute in the form of a callback, and the second uh, argument uh, lists uh, some dependencies that uh, decide when the callback is executed. So the callback will is not executed during the rendering of the component, but will be executed once we register it, basically, when we execute the user effect at least once. Uh, it will be remembered and it will be executed 
every time one of these dependencies will change. Okay, so we are explicitly mentioning which are the variables, the, the state variables or the properties that uh, uh, we want to monitor, basically. And whenever one of these will change, the callback is called again. And there are different forms of this uh, second argument. Okay, the first form of this second argument is basically we don't have it; it's not provided. Like in our example, we don't have a second argument to use effect. We only have the first argument. Uh, sorry, yes, the first argument which are which is this uh, called into the braces. We don't have the second argument, and this means. Uh, that the side effect runs after ever every render okay every time the component renders because Re reacts uh, decides uh, to to render it uh, most likely because a prop has changed or state has changed or more than one state or more than one prop have changed and so on then um, at the end of the render cycle so remember the life cycle after all the rendering uh, we will call uh, this function every time, okay? Because maybe something we need to do to to, uh, to update uh, some some output anyway. Hmm? Um, the second form, we have uh, an empty array, okay? We can provide a second argument, an empty array, and this is the opposite. Uh, in this case, we are telling that there are some dependencies that decide when the effect should run. And these dependencies are none. So uh, the list of dependencies is empty. This means that uh, the uh, side effect is never run, okay? Because it runs only when some dependencies change, but I don't list any dependencies. So it will never run, except once, except once uh, after, at the mounting type. So this means uh, I only run when the component is mounted. Only once in the whole component lifecycle. Then, of course, if the component is unmounted and the new one uh, will be mounted again, it will run again in the new component, of course. But uh, in the lifecycle of a single component, uh, an effect with an empty dependency list will be run exactly once exactly once this is a guarantee doesn't depend on, re on the rendering of react or, or whatever okay so oh, uh, forgetting omitting the second argument means uh, always okay not provided means always at every render uh, empty array means uh, only once exactly once at the beginning at the first mount okay so imagine you are uh, loading an application and at the first time when you're loading the application, you need to retrieve some data from a server, for example. Uh, remember the fake courses uh, that we had uh, uh, in our uh, in our example. That operation need only to be done once. Okay. And what is the best place to do it? Since we are fetching data from outside, from these fake arrays or from a uh, external API, that would be uh, here. Okay, uh, in a, in an effect in a side effect that is run only once at mount time. Uh, we must be careful uh, of the code that we are using inside here, because if we are using some props, for example, in this code, uh, then the value that we see here is only the value, the initial value of the properties. Or if you're, using, if you're using some state here, it will be only the initial value of this property of this state variable. Uh, and if the props change and uh, or the state changes, uh, uh, this effect will not be called again, and so will not be updated basically with the new information. Okay. So usually when we do this uh, at mount time, uh, we tend. Uh, for sure not to use the state that will change. Maybe we set the state. We can set some state uh, with an initial value 
which is uh, determined from some extra source uh, instead of uh, uh, the initial value that we can provide with the use state uh, that must be a constant there okay um, uh, okay we will see we see this uh, of course in the examples and uh, these are just the, the syntax now we're just uh, reading together the syntax the third uh, option is to provide actually as a second argument of the use effect hook uh, an array that contains uh, many uh, variable names and uh, most likely these will be props uh, or will be states uh, or will be contexts and so on that may change due to the uh, to the rendering uh, operations in in, uh, in the rest of the application so a prop may be updated by the uh, um, by the containing component uh, a state may be updated by a sub state uh, that is embedded inside uh, some um, some uh, callback for example okay there are many reasons for those every time at least one of these dependencies change, um, the user effect is run. So it is effect as the opportunity of being uh, able to update whatever it's doing right now, uh, as soon as uh, some of the states or some of the properties are, are updated. Okay. So, um, we can see the difference, uh, uh, for example, with this uh, very simple uh, exercise. Okay, uh, I'm making a counter. Okay, in a, let, let's do it uh, with a code, so we can uh, we can feel the difference between uh, the different types uh, of hooks. Okay, so let's uh, in our application um, let's uh, implement a counter. Okay, so I have very account.js file function count props let's assume we are showing just a count a number okay return uh, maybe a2 uh, props dot number hmm. a, a stupid component like this okay uh, and in the application code we can define uh, some uh, uh, logic for incrementing this counter let's let's do it directly in the application uh, so maybe we can have a, a state uh, const uh, number set number is a use state with the initial value of uh, you know, three, okay? Because three is the perfect number. Uh, it's not defined. Uh, yeah, import use state from React. Thank you for not doing it yourself. Okay, we have a state variable, and uh, okay, let's forget about this uh, hello world and uh, implement this count. count uh, number equal to number okay let's save it we need to export it export default count and we go back to the application because we need to import it import count from count dot j js is implicit export default count okay so very simple we go to the application we need to reload it default is not a function what did I write uh, What are you telling to try to tell me? Webpack import the default is not fine. 
here const use state three the error should be here import count 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 What's wrong here? You state. Do you see anything wrong? Or maybe here? Yeah. Okay. Is the importing of state uh, because uh, I was importing the whole library React and calling it use state instead of importing the property use state inside uh, the React function. Okay, so here we go. So we have, we have a very simple app uh, which is calling a component uh, count uh, that displays a state number, and this case is three. And uh, okay. Um, we can, okay, we'll get rid of some of the errors by, by reloading them. Okay, now let's see what happens in, dif in different types uh, of, uh, with different types of hooks uh, that we put inside the count. So we may have uh, one first hook, uh, user effect, that runs without the second parameter. So I have a callback that uh, says uh, console.log uh, without a second parameter um, it's, it's the always form always and we add the props the number okay then we can see the same use effect with the empty array, and we call it uh, once. And uh, the third effect, uh, where we list uh, this property as a dependency, and uh, uh, we call it on demand. Okay, on demand meaning on when the dependencies ask for it. Okay, if we run this application, so we set these three hooks with the three modalities, without the second parameter, with an empty second parameter, and with the um, value of the change property as a second parameter. If we run the app, we see the app, we see in the, in the, in the console that uh, always three, once three, on demand three. Three, of course, is the value of the number. And all the three hooks has been executed. All the T effects are being executed. So all the effect will always be executed at the first mounting of the component, always, okay? So every hook will be executed at least once when the component is first mounted. And what happens if we, we change some property? For change the property, we may go to the app and uh, maybe add some some button. Uh, we call it plus, and we just have a non-click, a very simple event handler, which is a callback to set num with n. And plus one. Remember, we have to set the uh, the delayed uh, increase. Okay. So if we save it, what happens in our application? We have uh, let's reload it from scratch. Okay. The component has been mounted. Three is the default value of the state. So when we mount the count component, uh, we have these hooks uh, running one, two, three. When I click on plus, of course, the state in app is increased. The state on, on app will uh, modify the props of the component. 
and uh, it will run the hooks always and the hooks on demand. Okay, always will run anyway because we render the components. And on demand uh, only changed because uh, um, the prop was changed. So every time we click on this, we're changing the states, we are changing the props, uh, and these two hooks uh, are executed. And not the first one. The once uh, is not executed uh, uh, anymore. By the way, you see that the order in which these uh, three hooks uh, uh, may not is or may in this case it's the same as we declared but it doesn't mean doesn't need to be of course it's a it's a synchronous behavior if we add a second property for example in our uh, in our application so for example another property fake number and set fake um, and then we can uh, maybe change it uh, together so we are set number and also set fake uh, well let's change it let's let's try to change only only the fake one Okay. So we start with three, and we are passing the face, the fake, uh, the two properties, number and fake. So I'm passing a second property to the component that is not used on the component itself. Uh, there's uh, an extra. Uh, Okay. Okay, I had an extra parenthesis like this. No. Uh, oops. So let me count the parentheses. Uh, set fake like this. So in this case, we have the same button, 333. If I click, you see that the tree doesn't change, but the uh, always is executed more than once. Then the, the console just collapses them by saying, OK, four means that there are four identical lines like this. So in this case, even if we are, let's see the code, even if we are uh, logging the value of number and number doesn't change and the display of the component doesn't change but the proper the component is rendered anyway because some of its properties and in case this uh, fake property changed and since this changed uh, the component is re-rendered and the hook that just depends, the, the always hook that depends on every rend every render will run every time. Okay. The second one, the, so the third one, will not run because even if the component is re-rendered, uh, the value of the number uh, property didn't change. So actually, this uh, effect will compare the value of the property of the in this case of the number when we are trying to render the component and we'll compare it with the previous version and if only if they are different then this effect is run otherwise it's not run okay so depends on uh, what we want uh, actually it's uh, quite unlikely that we need to do something at every render okay because maybe it depends on the on the on the reason for the for the rendering. Uh, and so if nothing changed, probably we don't need to to do something special. But we have the three opportunity. We have the three choices. Okay. And it what we are doing here. And actually, maybe let's take a second to 
understand what is happening in the timeline here okay uh, let's forget about the the, the always uh, uh, hook because it's the sorry, the simplest one uh, what what happens when we are executing this um, this code as a timeline just imagine how things uh, are progressing in time first of all okay we create the comp the, the component count and the parameter is three because it's the initial value of the state. The component is mounted. When we are mounted the component, first of all, we render the function. So rendering means executing the body of the function and it finishes with the returning the JSX that contains three. So this is the first run of the function. We are running the code here, we call it render. And basically the render is just here in this component in just this return because it's so simple but we are executing the function um, render let's make it right in a readable way render okay why we are rendering this function we find this use effect calls and so we are registering these effects so we are saving the callbacks somewhere we are not executing them right now because we are in the rendering phase. We are just saying, okay, this function needs, uh, this component needs some effects. Then the render is finished and we go to the commit phase. In the commit phase, we are running the effects that needs to be run, of course, not all of them, only those that need, that needs to be run. And in particular, the component was just mounted. And so it means that we run all effects, the first one, and the second one all of them at the first mounting we always run the all effects at the in the first commit phase after the first render phase okay and then the application is still the user clicks uh, the um, callback is activated the application update the state the state is updated uh, uh, remember that from the click of the user to the uh, run of the callback from the run of the callback to the update of the state uh, and from the update of the state to the update of the number property uh, everything happens asynchronously okay so uh, the user clicks it will schedule the uh, callback and when the callback runs it will schedule the set number and when the set number runs it will uh, uh, schedule the state update and when the state is updated also the properties are updated and uh, the component uh, finally will be re-rendered so we have a second render stage triggered by the update of the number that follows a sequence of asynchronous events okay it all happens uh, we are accustomed to that uh, uh, we see that the all apps uh, instantaneously but actually there are separate events several se separate callbacks that happen in, in sequence the final result is that num changes and so the component is re-rendered so we have a render one and a render two in this rendering the use effects are ignored because we already have uh, uh, registered them the first time uh, we return the JSX. And then, uh, and then we run the commit phase. And in the commit phase, the second commit phase, we are checking the preconditions for the, uh, the effects and say, OK, um, did any of the variables inside this bracket change? No, there are none, so radically. We don't need to run it. Did any of the variables inside these brackets change? Yes this one changed so we need to run the second effect that's the logic of use effect uh, just remember first we render then we commit and this was easy this example was easy because uh, uh, the only change that we had here is uh, uh, changing the state sorry the properties somebody outside from outside changed my props and so i need to re uh, the component is re-rendered and 
uh, the, hook, the hook that depended on that specific property that was changed, of course, uh, was uh, executed. Okay, that was easy. Uh, it's more complex when the only the thing that changes are not uh, just uh, um, properties, but uh, also state, because of course the rendering can be triggered not uh, by not just by properties, but also by state changes. And so what happens here? Hmm? Uh, think of at the timeline. Uh, we have a two-way collaboration between states uh, and uh, effects. Uh, collaboration or mutual, mutual triggering. Hmm? The simplest case is when a state variable is listed as a dependency. So we have a state n, which is a, a state variable which is listed as a dependency in an effect declaration. So this means that whenever the state changes, the effect is run. Uh, is is a bit strong. Uh, I would say will be run. Okay, because the state changes now, and after the state changes, uh, I need to re-render the component, and after the render phase, I will have a commit phase for that component where the effect will be run. Okay, so we, when we have a, uh, if a, a, an effect depends on n, we will have a set n method that will set a new value that will uh, change the value of n, that will trigger the a new um, render phase, that after that will trigger a new commit phase, and in this commit phase we will realize that n has changed and so we run the effect. Okay. So uh, the effect is run is a statement that says for sure it will be run, but it's not run right now immediately. Okay. If the state is updated, so we have a set n with the by chance the same value as before, so the, the value of the state doesn't change. We have the update uh, functionality set n will update n, but then the procedure will stop here because if the state value didn't change not the content of a state, there's no need to re-render. And so therefore, there's also no need to go to a commit phase in which in any case, it will find n uh, unmodified and uh, it will not uh, uh, execute the effect. Okay. So this is the easy part. Whenever we change a state variable and where can we stand a change a state variable inside a, call, a callback uh, a non-click callback, for example, or a user effect. Inside an effect, of course, we can schedule a state change. Uh, uh, we say that we cannot execute said effect inside the render phase, but we didn't say anything about the commit phase. In the commit phase, we can do whatever we want. Side effects, state changes, props change, whatever. There are no limitations anymore. Okay. Uh, of course, if you change the state, you need to use it with a set function not just changing the variable okay but already we know this the other and the other way of care of course like we're saying inside the use effect function we may schedule a state update so this uh, state update may from a callback for example may trigger an effect or also inside an effect we may trigger a state update and of course, the state update will be updated asynchronously after the execution of the effect. So we execute the effect. After that, the set state callback will be executed. The state will be changed. The component will be re-rendered if the value is different from before. And the effect or effects, plural, that depend on that specific state will be run in the next uh, commit phase. Hmm. Just be aware to avoid infinite loops uh, because if you are modifying a state variable inside an event that depends on that very same uh, variable, you are uh, entering an infinite modification loop. So you can usually set a state uh, which is different from the state that you are depending on. Okay, so we are we try to mix the two together. And uh, uh, for, for testing them, I, I will 
do a, open a, a, a another example uh, I call it uh, a, a, a quick gate okay let's design a gate okay a gate that uh, is normally closed when you click on that gate it will become open but uh, uh, it will be open only for uh, half a second, 500 milliseconds, and then it will close uh, immediately. Okay, so you have a short time for, for entering the gate. So we may have a, a, a function that uh, implements this uh, gate, this component, let's call it quick gate. Okay, uh, where the, this component, of course, must have a state. Uh, that will tell me whether it's open or not. We open, set open, is normally state. And uh, by default is closed. So it's open, no, false. And we import use state from React. Right? So, uh, again, it's a very simple component where uh, we can return a simple div, maybe, with, a, with a, a text that says whether the gate is open or closed, okay? So, whether it's open, then we write uh, that is open. And otherwise, we write that it's closed. OK. Uh, was, uh, OK, closing brace. Um, OK. When the user clicks on the gate, it will open it. So we say that when the user clicks on the gate, uh, the gate is open. Uh, we can have a callback, uh, open gate, that will open the gate. Of course, it's just uh, one line here, but uh, we are doing one step at a time. Open the gate. So let me make it larger. I forgot to make it larger, sorry. Um, open the gate, uh, we'll just set open to true. Okay. So this should work quite easily. Let's mount it into the app. Uh, maybe let's put it below so that we don't have to delete it. Uh, it's the quick gate. I need to export, sorry, otherwise I can't import, export, default, quick gate, and from the app, quick gate, it doesn't have any property. So let's see how it works. Uh, we go to the browser, now the gate is closed, if I click on it, nothing happens, so there's a, I have a problem. Uh, quick gate. Uh, ah, yes, I didn't register the on click event. On click is uh, open gate. Okay, so this stage, if I go to the browser, the gate is closed. I click it, it becomes open. And then I want it to close uh, immediately. Just, sorry, after a uh, short time. So I need to set a timer, but I don't want to set a timer in the callback here, okay? Because we are in the, in the render function here. Uh, it's better to say when does the when does the timer needs to start. Uh, setting a timer is something external to the component, so it should be handled as a side effect. Okay, the side effect of opening the gate is to start a timer for closing it later. So we can decide that we have a side effect 
that uh, depends on the gate being opened. So whenever we open the gate, we need to uh, generate some side effects and consequences in the form of a function that will set a timer for closing the gate. Okay, so that every part of the component has a different purpose. This one is for managing the state. And the effect is for managing the consequences outside the component itself, so in the timer, for example, that come from the change of, from that state change. Um, and in this case, what do we need to do? We just need to set up a timer. Oi. Set timer where we are setting uh, a function to close the gate uh, so we need to set uh, open to false when after 500 milliseconds um, Sorry, set timeout. Okay. So when the open state changes, I will set a timeout that after 500 milliseconds will call set open, will change the state again. I need to close the gate. The only way to close the gate is to change the state of the gate itself. I can't modify the component, the DOM, or whatever. Okay. So the effects. Uh, communicate with the external world through the state. They depend on state changes and they can create or cause state changes. Okay, if we try it, it's closed, we click on closed, it becomes open and after a while it will close again automatically. Okay, every time we click on it, it will set, every time, not, not we click, every time it changes, it will be set again. It will be executed again. Uh, we still have a, a, a little problem here because this effect will run both when we open and when we close the gate. Okay, because uh, every time open changes from false to true, but also from true to false, uh, this effect will be executed. Okay, um, so try to avoid doing something like uh, state, uh, not state, uh, because you will crash your application in an infinite loop by itself. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Uh, because whenever it will, uh, it's, uh, it's brought to, to false, uh, then it will uh, uh, again become true and will set a uh, uh, timeout for making it uh, false again and that will set up uh, uh, and, and another timer and so on okay so always try to avoid modifying a state that from which you are depending okay uh, the best thing will be only to set this timeout if the state uh, is true so if it's open, then we schedule the close to close it. So we don't have extra, sorry, enough state is open. We don't have extra events being uh, triggered. Hmm. So in this case, it's better. Only if, it's, if open is true, then we set a timeout. When open becomes false, this effect will be called, but open is false, so the timeout will not be programmed. Okay, so this uh, behaves uh, correctly without extra firings of the of the uh, of the effect. So uh, modifications of the state and modifications of um, and running of the event play well together. We just need to remember, okay, to use the dependencies and to use the set uh, um, sets uh, on the state uh, in the in the correct way. And remember, everything that needs to be to, to, to create some side effects uh, needs to be inside the use effect. 
if we uh, consider this uh, in this example, let's try to think about a bit about uh, the timeline of what happens. Okay, uh, in this example, that is the same as uh, we developed together. Uh, the component uh, is first created and mounted. Okay, we know that. Uh, and then we have a render function. Quick gate is called until the JSX is returned. This is the render phase, the first render phase. Uh, in the first time, uh, time, we find the use state, and so we create a state variable. We find use effect, and we register the side effect function. The state uh, is assigned the default value, and the use effect is not executed. Then we have the commit phase. In the commit phase, we are running uh, the effects, uh, all the effects, uh, because it's the first commit. It's the first one, so we always run it. This is the version without the if, so it will set a timeout. Mm, a very stupid one because the state is already false and we are setting, we are scheduling to set it false, so it will not have many consequences. But the timeout will be set, uh, and this now some time passes, so the timeout is set, nothing happens. When the timeout expires, so this is an extra fetch, some external event is not inside the rendering or inside the commit. When the timeout expires, then the callback for the timeout is called and set open is executed. So this part is the uh, timeout, timeout execution here that will schedule a state change as a consequence and the state becomes false. It was already false and so nothing happens. Then we wait some time. And so all of this happens uh, automatically at, at the first render. So you maybe you didn't think about this part, but it will run. It doesn't have any consequences, but it, of course it will slow down the application if you want. Then uh, user clicks, it creates a new event, and this is the consequence of the user click. So we are, uh, we are in the callback and we execute a callback. The callback will try, will schedule a state change after the callback the state change will be executed so we are all in the callbacks here of the events we are processing the events and uh, since the state changed become true after this set open by the callback then we enter a new render phase uh, again we render the jsx with the new version right now it's open and we evaluate in the commit phase, we evaluate uh, the effects. In this case, this, this effect depends on open. Open was uh, false the last time I saw it, but now it's true. And so I need to execute the body of the effect. Uh, I find it change from false to true, and so I execute the timeout. And uh, again we go, because uh, after a while the timeout expires, again, um, so set open is executed to false, becomes false, after the state becomes false, we are triggering again a, a render phase and a commit phase. And uh, in the commit phase, in this case, uh, you find the open that change from true to false, and so you are re- um, setting a new timeout and so on, but this new timeout will just uh, reset the state to false. So it's doing extra work. In our code, we had this uh, if additional if uh, to prevent uh, uh, setting timeouts that are useless because they will only set the state from false to false. Okay, so we should be aware of the order of execution of, the dis of these different activities, and we should trust. Uh, Okay, whenever we want to do some operation as a consequence of a state change, we use an effect. Even if it just means uh, I need to update a state variable after another state variable updated, okay, I can, we can do that with an use effect. Use effect will monitor some state 
and whenever it changes do some code that me may just even simply update another state variable okay here we had a timeout but uh, we could just have a set uh, open in uh, directly okay we don't need to to do any we don't really need to do something complex for running into an effect just every time some code needs to be executed as a consequence of some changes changes in values of props or states that happen during the commit phase we just define an effect okay uh, that and effects can also of course change one to uh, the other because one effect can change a state and the state can trigger another effect and so on okay so our react is managing all of this we should really think the effects are separated one from the other okay what are my dependencies what do i need to do and then the chaining will just happen we don't need to try to chain them explicitly in our code okay it will just be the propagation of the values that will trigger the effects uh luca is asking what happens if we click uh, in the second time uh, um, it it will set a second timeout, but the gate will be closed after the first one because the first one is not uh, um, cancelled by the second one. Okay, so I'm uh, clicking to open. I'm starting the timeout of, of uh, five seconds. I click a second time. If clicking a second time, I'm doing a set open true. I'm not sorry. Uh, this second open true will find uh, um, the state true will change to true. So there is no change in the state and so the effect doesn't run so we don't in this case in this specific case we don't we are not scheduling a second uh, timeout because the condition for scheduling the timeout is that open the open state changed but it's already true we, we set it to true again and so it didn't change so in this case the effect is not run a second time if instead of a boolean we had an, uh, an, uh, an integer number that we increment, we would have set a second timeout, of course. So it all depends on the dependency on the changes of the state. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some some problems that we we have time next uh, next week to to dig uh, into these problems uh, about what happens if you forget some values from the dependency arrays, uh, uh, and so the the the, the hook will run with old values. But it's some something that needs uh, to work into more complex uh, examples. Um, one last point I, I want to, to, to work with you today is, uh, okay, we have states, we have effects, uh, and we have fetches. So let's try to see what happens is one of the, uh, which was the starting point for today. Okay, if we, are, if we want to do some API calls. So the, the user effect will want to call a fetch uh, for doing some API. For starting some API, okay. Um, so fetch is of course a side effect. Therefore, it should be inside an effect, and we should understand when we want to fetch it uh, by setting some dependencies that will trigger the execution of the effect, and that uh, will uh, call the function itself. Okay. So I want to. Uh, uh, well, just a, a note, just a, a warning, a syntax warning, basically. Um, fetch is a, returns a promise, okay? So maybe you want to use await to handle this promise. Um, await only works inside an asynchronous function. So maybe you want to make the, which is the function in which fetch is called, uh, should be the callback here so you would like to make this callback async the problem is that you cannot no? it's not possible that the callback of user effect cannot be an asynchronous function okay uh, the reason is uh, we'll see it uh, uh, in a moment uh, is that the, this callback may sometimes return a value and this value cannot be a promise. It should be a real value. 
and if the function is async uh, that automatically returns a promise so basically what, what we say is that use effect cannot have an async function as a callback and so if you want to have some async code you define your own function and then call it synchronously okay so when you see this code uh, the first time I saw this code, I said, okay, well, why are you making an extra function while you just need to, to make this a thing? Then I realized it could not be done, okay? So you need an extra layer of functions uh, um, for that. Uh, so we you define your own asynchronous function. Inside of that, uh, you can, of course, use uh, async as you want, await as you want. So what we want to do now is uh, an application like this, okay? And we move to the other uh, and a client server application okay we have a browser uh, a react application where we can insert some text and uh, uh, we have an api on the server side that is able to take this string and build a string outside down upside down uh, where we are using some unicode characters to that look like uh, inverted letters okay uh, and we want it to be dynamic. So while we write it, uh, it will be reversed. It can be done all in the in the in the client, but we want to make it uh, a client server. Okay. So um, let, let's create this. So let's close what we have here and move into these other two uh, folders: flip client and flip server. I call them. Let's start from the server. So let's stop it, Control to C. Let's start from the server. In the server, we have just a, an empty uh, application. And uh, uh, we want to use uh, uh, an, an API, OK, um, which uh, only we are only offering one API, for example, get, uh, that uh, will uh, respond to the API flip for example and we receive some text and return the flipped text the, the upside, upside down text okay we could do any manipulation of the text just extract the consonants or whatever you want okay but uh, it is i think this wasn't fun okay request response um, and so i should extract the text from the request let's assume we are sending it uh, uh, in the in the query text so it will be flip question mark uh, text equal to whatever so we may have an api with get api flip question mark text equal abc Okay, and it will return a JSON uh, with uh, uh, something like text, uh, the reverse of ABC. I mean, so it's something like uh, some strange characters where ABC is reversed. Okay, not text, sorry, with the S, with the X. Okay, so this is what we are trying to implement. So we extract the text from the request, request.query.text, and we flip it. Uh, for flipping it, uh, I was lazy, and so I, was, I found uh, in the flip server cd flip server uh, a library which is called flip. So npm install flip flip text. Hmm? So so with this flip text library that I called that I found, okay, because I was too lazy to make it myself, we can const flip equal require flip text uh, we can just uh, 
compute the flip text by calling the flip function. And then we can return return uh, response dot json an object uh, with the um, text the sorry yes text equal to flipped okay so this is just the server if I uh, run it, so let me split the terminal, uh, node one, server. Okay, if we see, for example, we try to call it like local lost 3001 uh, API flip question mark text equal abc it will give me an error probably flipped is not defined okay flipped with the l save okay so let's try it again okay you see here here uh, let me copy it here because it's larger larger it will create some strange characters where the, the letters look uh, look flipped okay using unicode characters so this is our api on the server i make a i made a very simple one that is already running on port 3001 now we want to call it from our react application Okay, so let us, let's keep the, start, the server running in this window here and go back to the client application. So let's save it here and go to the app. Okay. Um, where we can uh, so uh, have a component flipper. That will just what, what do we what do we need to render function flipper props we need to render a, a text area so return return a div that contains a text and then an input element type equal to text text and then the, the the flipped text below so let's go to a new line br and then the flipped text should be below right uh, we need to set some states in this component one for the original text that will uh, control the input element and one for the flipped text that we'll get uh, through the api so we have const uh, text use text set text is a use state that we start uh, empty you are very stupid no suggestion import use state from react from sorry okay and the second state for the flipped text flipped set flipped So the first one will be used to control the state, control the input element. So we have the control over uh, the value equal to text. And of course, for controlling the element, we need to have an unchange handler 
that will set the text, update the state. So we already know how to do that. Event calls use state. So sorry, set state, set text of event of target dot value. This is what we normally do with input elements. And the flipped, of course, will be just the, the state flipped. So if we import this into the app, we need to export and import it. Export default flipper and import flipper from slash flipper. Okay, let's see. Let's try to run it. So we are inside the, we go into flip client and run. Okay. Uh, npm start, sorry. npm start. And finally, we'll try to see if uh, it works. Okay. Okay, this is just the, the client portion. Okay, now let's connect together the two. Uh, first of all, we need to configure the proxy server in order to be able to call a fetch from uh, uh the, the reactor into the other server so let's start the server for a moment open the packet.json inside the flip client and just add your line where you want like proxy to the uh, localhost ltdp localhost 3001. Okay, so that we have the proxy server and restart the application. Okay, and now we can finally, in our flipper component, say what happens when the uh, user uh, wrote something. If this text change uh, text state change, we need to call the API and get uh, the new version of the flipped text. So we use a user factor uh, that depends on the text. So whenever the text changes and changes here for this reason, well, we, but we don't need to make it more complex here. We, does, we, are, we just change the state and when the state is changed, we need to do our callback. So we are here, we are setting the, uh, the asynchronous code. Uh, we call a function like uh, load flipped. Okay, uh, async. And in this function, what we do is just to call the fetch the flipped text const flipped equal to um, fetch. We are calling the same API, API flip question mark uh, text equal, and we concatenate just the text state. We, if we await for this fetch, we have the response here. Let's call it the response. And then the, the actual flipped text is uh, available by extracting from the response. Await from the response. We are awaiting the... Um, the extraction of the JSON from the body. So response.json. At this point, flipped will be an object, 
but we can use to set this oh not let's not call it flipped uh, flip a text and so we can update the state set flipped to our flipped text this function this is just a function definition so we need to call it here load flipped okay let's try it if i write some uh, something's wrong, of course, uh, because uh, object not ready, real child, uh, object with keys, text. Uh, what did they write here? Use effect. Here, line 13, what did you set flipped, uh, flip text. Uh, Ah, okay, stupid. It's not flip text because this is an object. You have the text property. We need to extract the string from that. Okay. ABC. ABC. You see that uh, it's working. And every time we uh, type something, it will create a new get and we call a new get from the server in the fetch. When you, every time we change it, a new fetch will be executed and uh, uh, the response of this fetch will contain the JSON object come here the JSON object containing the text attribute that we are just placing into the component okay so we are putting together the change in the in the text input uh, and uh, with the API we are computing a new value that we are just integrating into the component. So what we are seeing here, and in closing, sorry for the, the, the delay, but I wanted to finish the, the exercise. We have an onChange event that will cause a state change. This state text will change and will trigger an effect. This effect will call through the load flipped, will call a fetch that will involve the server. Later, the server will respond, and when the server responds, we change another state. This is a different state, the flipped state, that will, of course, trigger another render of this component. So we have one re rendering when the text changes on the set text, and a second re render when flipped changes as the flipped event. Okay, uh, uh, right. It, it happens so fast that we don't see that we, uh, that we have uh, this double re-render. And the, in the second case, when we change the flipped, of course, this effect is not run anymore because it doesn't depend on the flip. So it uses this effect uses text as an input in a, in a way, and uh, uh, flipped as an output because it's been changed inside the event. And for doing that, it needs to speak with the server and call it a very simple API. Okay, so this is the basic uh, skeleton of whatever we will be doing with the uh, remote APIs. Uh, integrating states, uh, effects, uh, and fetch calls uh, to remote APIs. This is a very simple example. You can start to try to understand it and play with that. Uh, in the lab, uh, we'll also ask you to, to, to implement uh, some simple um, API in this case. Next week, we'll try to reorganize a bit the code understand what happens if the server is slow in responding so how can we can show it how we can handle it how we can manage the errors uh, we also will see that it's not a good practice to have the api urls inside the same code of the components because it creates a binding so we'll, we will probably move all these functions into a separate file so that we have one file that contains all the API calls and the components don't need to bother with the details of the fetch and so on. But it's just a better reorganization and uh, finding good programming patterns uh, from the basic principles that are all already in this uh, very stupid example with the flipped text that at least is fun. Uh, it's fun to play with, 
but it contains all the uh, all the dependencies from state to to effect from effect to state and both of them to the fetch calls okay sorry for the wrong, long run at the end uh, i'm going to commit this code uh, immediately so that you can uh, have a look and play with that if you have any questions you may, we may follow up of course uh, on slack uh, even before the the next week so in the lab in the, in the second big lab you will try to connect uh, some of the component with the fetch call to the API that you developed in last week. And uh, thanks uh, for uh, for listening and sorry for the delay. Uh, I think we can uh, see each other next week uh, when we continue. Okay, this uh, this part, uh, which is the mo let's say the most important logic part of our React applications. Mm -hmm. So thanks for everybody to everybody and see you next week. Bye-bye.